Welcome to this special film looking at some of the old photographs of Guildford in the collection of Guildford Heritage Services. My name is Melanie Holliker and today I am in conversation with local historian David Rose looking at photos of the High Street. Welcome David. Yeah, good morning Melanie. Thank you for having me here. I think it's just going to be pretty exciting having a look at some really good old pictures of Guildford. Yes, there's some there's some wonderful photos. So let's get started. Um, this, I think, uh, this photo is one of the oldest in our collection. Um, a picture of the cattle market when it used to be held in the high street. Presumably that was a regular event and something that had been held for many years. Oh, absolutely. Um, we really need to go back to 1257 when uh, Henry III uh, gave Guildford its royal charter, which um, made that Guildford could govern itself um, and it could hold markets and fairs and also have a county court forever. So for centuries, the agricultural market that served the West Surrey area was in the high street. And, and as you said, this is a really early photograph and you can see the, uh, the sheep pens there um, made of wood, of course, and then packed in it. There's a man riding down the uh, high street. I think he, he must be on a, on a horse or a pony there. Um, of course, Guildford's got a really long history of um, sheep farming and the woolen industry. But in fact, one little story is, is that um, sheep were grazed on the North Downs at one time. Some of them had actually been brought up by train from Romney Marsh in Kent, and they were overwintered here um, in this area before going back to, to Kent when the weather improved. But the market in the high street, um, certainly by 1865, was blocking through traffic because the high street being uh, one of the main thoroughfares through the town. And therefore, all the muck and the mess was transferred from one street to another. The high street itself was part pedestrianised, as we probably remember, in the 1970s. And of course, it continues to be used uh, for markets and fairs to, to this day, um, the farmer's market being one of them. But um, I must admit, I don't see too many traditional farmers at that market today, but it's a, it's a lovely event. Can we have a look at the next picture then, please? Yes, yeah, this is, um, yeah, I agree with you, David. I love going to the farmer's market as well, but it, it's the high street is completely different, isn't it, from that picture we've just seen. Oh. And, and this one, actually, it's, it's a completely different picture, isn't it, um, of the high street. I believe that's the White Hart Hotel, the building with the, the portico, the big porch um, on the left there. Absolutely, that's right. So, so we're we're up the top of the high street now, looking down, and uh, sort of to the right uh, is is Abbott's Hospital. So we're looking down there. Actually, you can just see a a, a lamp there. I'm saying Jeffrey's Chemist. So we're right by where Jeffrey's Passage goes down to North Street. Um, Henry Jeffrey set up a chemist shop in Guildford in, in, in about 1815, I think, and it, of course it carried on by that name uh, into the 50s and early 60s. So, but the picture, of course, is the, what's dominant is, is the White Hart Hotel, and it was a number of hostelries that were once in the high street. Um, their heyday was that time of the, the horse-drawn coaching era of the uh, 18th century, and then moving into the early 19th century. Um, by the sort of turn of that century, um, a lot of main roads have been improved and uh, tolls were collected on them and they were maintained by a turnpike. But Guildford, interestingly, was, of course, a, a useful stopping off point, being about halfway between London uh, and Portsmouth and with the Royal Navy um, at the Portsmouth dockyard. So it was reckoned that the White Hart was Guildford's um, finest hotel. There, you know, there were a number of them. The Angel Hotel is, is probably the only one that exists today. Um, but once the railways came in 1845, you know, the coaching area came to an end and many of the, the hotels in, in Guildford suffered. But the White Hart, you know, did survive. Um, it became a venue for sort of corporation and other organisations, dinners uh, and events. Now, you can see in that picture, there's a statue of the stag above the entrance. Um, the hotel was um, pulled down in 1905 and it was replaced by one of James Sainsbury's stores. So that's, again, a, a clue to um, to identifying the, the location of today where, where Sainsbury's has still got it, its shop there. Um, but one little story I really like is that uh, when Sainsbury's um, opened in Guildford, uh, trade was really slow at first. And there is a story, I don't know how true it is, that um, in the first week of trading, it only took £40 in total in the tills. 
And uh, Emily James Sainsbury himself came down to Guildford from London and he spent a few weeks in the town drumming up trade. So there we go. Forty pounds. <laughs> that's all they took in the first week. <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't sound much even back then, does it? So Not really? No, no, that's right. I think we can have a look at um, the next picture. Yes, which, is, which uh, let's see that is. also yes. also the top of the high street. But now we're looking at the other side of the road with, of course, one of Guildford's most iconic buildings, Abbott's Hospital. That's right. Um, opened in 1619 and it was a gift to the town by Archbishop George Abbott. Um, he's without doubt Guildford's most famous person in the town's national history. Uh, George Abbott was born in Guildford in 1652 and his father was a cloth merchant. Um, interesting, you may spot in there, there's a coach and horses making its way up the high street. Um, now this, mm. picture, yeah, this picture dates just before the First World War. So it's the coaching era, as I mentioned, has, has finished by then, you know, the railways have taken over. Um, but what this is actually, it's, um, it's a coach called the Reliance. And it's making its way from the Lion Hotel, which was down at the bottom of the high street where White Lion Walk is now. And uh, it's going to Victoria Hotel in London. Now, what this was in the early 1900s, it was a sort of short lived recreation of the glory days of the coaching era. And I think this is not unlike um, steam train trips today which we have and they're sort of popular purely for leisure travel so i think that's really what uh, was going on uh, in that picture there as that uh, coach is, is making its way going past abbott's hospital and also on the right uh, you might just be able to glimpse um gates's store gates the uh, uh, the grocers that then uh, later became the, the world famous dairy firm and baby food firm cowan gate I love that story, David, about the coach and horses, because I've looked at this photo and it has puzzled me. So now you, you've cleared something up um, mm. from that. So that's wonderful. Um, yeah. Let's have a look at another another picture. This this is amazing, isn't it? I mean, the high street, we all know Guildford High Street is very <laughs> steep and it looks like it, it's caused some problems at times. Yeah, I, I must add here, you know, so many people call it the cobbled high street and yet they're not cobbles. They're uh, they're. Um, granite sets mm. but here we have it literally covered in bricks so uh uh gosh this is um it's it's a it's from a picture postcard and uh the picture postcard craze that began in the 1900s also became a way of uh, spreading the news of dramatic events floods storms and, and road accidents um were really popular subjects at that time and so events like this, an overturned road wagon, um, was photographed and quickly printed up uh, on, on postcards, which um, people, if they didn't actually post them and send them to other people, but they kept them as a, as a sort of reminder of that event. Um, and there are others actually of Guildford as well. Um, this one, as I say, it was a steam traction engine uh, that had a couple of wagons and it, and it overturned. Uh, and I think it's probably not surprising how um, those coming down the steep hill there, uh, a traction engine would lose its grip on, on the granite sets there and, and, and tip over there. Um, there's another one that's, that's known, uh, uh, again, a, a picture of a traction engine that crashed uh, up on the Epsom Road and uh, it, it, that actually killed one of its crew, one of the drivers of it. And then there was another one that lost its footing um, just into Quarry Street near St Mary's Church. And that tipped over and again the the, the, the wagon it was pulling behind um, spread its load. Uh, there's another one of, a, of, a, of an engine that was pulling a furniture van and that toppled over in the high street and went through the window of a tailor's shop and yet another picture of a steam lorry then in North Street that ran backwards and crashed into an undertaker's premises. So <laughs> it, it really wasn't a very safe place to be walking through Guildford's town centre in the early 1900s. No, absolutely. So yeah, the high street sounds like it's been the um, the site of quite a few crashes and also some other dramatic events. So we've got a picture coming up of the um, snow, the infamous snow of the early 1960s. Oh, absolutely. You know, and um, giving my age away, I was uh, barely three years old then. But I, you know, I do really think I've got memories of looking out the window at home and seeing uh, this great big uh, fall of, of snow. Uh, what we see in this picture is, is is a policeman trying to keep the traffic moving up and down the high street. 
Uh, you can see Boots the Chemist there, which was um, on the opposite side of the high street to where it is today. And then, I hope it doesn't make it confusing, where Boots is now, back then in 62, uh, there was Marks and Spencer. And then that moved down um, further down the high street to where it is today. Uh, this picture must have been taken quite early on in the big freeze. I think it, it started snowing on, on Boxing Day 1962 because, it, as I say, it's quite early because you can just about see some of the Christmas decorations still up uh, in the high street there. And I don't think it was as if it snowed a great deal um, throughout the period. It's just that the temperature didn't rise. It stayed below freezing well on into March there. And uh, this picture was taken by Tom Wilkie. Uh, he was a w very well-known professional photographer and he had his um, premises in Drummond Road in Guildford. Um, he specialised actually in taking um, uh, photographs in the agricultural industry. But gosh, he knew the value of news photography as well, as you can see in this one. Yes, and I think we've got a, our last picture um, is another one from Wilkie and another um, dramatic weather event. <laughs> exactly. Um, we talk about having a, a lot of weather. Well, they, they certainly did in, in, you know, in the 1960s. And this is, uh, of course, the, the 1968 floods. Uh, this picture was the front page image on the, on the Surrey Advertiser the, the following weekend, uh, because what had, happened was there was um, really heavy rainfall on uh, Sunday, September the 14th. And later that night, the riverway burst its banks and water came up through the drains. And by the Monday afternoon, um, the foot of the town was under under several feet of water, you know. And it was said at the time, the scale of this flooding was a, a once in a thousand year occurrence, you know. Um, of course, people came out um, in their boats. The, the, fortunately, you know, there weren't uh, people who um, who suffered too much. A lot of businesses did, of course, because they were flooding. And you can just see the depth of the, the water there. Um, there's a lovely story about um, the police receiving reports of bodies floating in, in the floodwaters. But of course, they were tailors dummies that had come out of some of the shops. There's John Collier down there. Uh, and it took a, a big clear up efforts. The whole uh, thing was masterminded by, by Surrey Police and the emergency services. But in the days afterwards, an amazing clear up operation where just people came out to, to help one another. Certainly the houses along Warntree Close were badly hit and local scouts and guides all sort of did their bit to help that. But uh, people talk about this now, you know, September 68 and uh, it, it, people have very uh, strong memories of it, certainly. So that that really is a very iconic image, isn't it, for Guildford? And so I think it's a really good one for us to end on. So thank you, David, um, for your time. It's been fascinating looking at these old photos with you. And and I hope our uh, viewers have enjoyed looking at them with us as well. And if anybody would like to see any more historic photos of Guildford, you can take a look at our online exhibition, Guildford Streets. Thank you.